Hey guys, I'm Devin and I'm from Baca Burrito. Today's episode is called Breakfast Burrito, which is a new segment we'll be starting uh, once a week on Wednesday mornings. Um, essentially what we're going to be doing is covering a topic that each of us knows a little more about than the others because I know for a fact that there are certain things like say sports anime with Max or card game animes with me um, that not all of us watch or have enough go-to knowledge to cover so I figure this way uh, we could have a couple shorter segments where you get to know each of us one-on-one -on -one and we get to cover a topic that we really like um, that being said, today's topic of Breakfast Burrito is going to be, in my opinion, the best anime with a real-life game. So that includes um, like anything that has a real-life version of it that you can physically play or electronically play. Um, I will say that um, I have quite a few honorable mentions that for me just didn't make the cut just because of a couple different things. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started. I hope you guys enjoy. Um, Alright, so for my first honorable mention, I have Duel Masters. Um, it's an anime about a card game in which you use a mana system in order to summon cards and activate spells. Um, another interesting thing about the game is it uses the top cards of your deck as these things called shields. And there are cards that are shield triggers and quick, pretty much quick effects. Um, and each card is really unique and it's a shame. The reason this one hasn't made my list is because of the fact that the show was canceled quite a few years ago. Um, it was very big briefly in uh, 2003, 2000, between 2003, 2005. Um, but after that, the show was canceled and the get card game didn't really go anywhere. Um, but I think the mechanics of the game uh, should definitely be revisited in other games. Um, another one I will say is Zeninzard. Um, it's a mobile game, so I felt like it didn't quite make the criteria, but it does have an anime that streams on their official YouTube. Um, again, that's Zen and Zard, but it's an AI-based card game where the AI learns your play patterns and tries to coach you through games. Um, if you've ever seen something like Yu-Gi-Oh, it's like uh, little Yugi with the Pharaoh inside of him. Um, so you have this knowledgeable being coaching you through your games. Um, I think everyone should give it a try. All you need is your phone. Um, and for my last honorable mention, I'm going to have to say Castlevania, um, only because it's a video game. And again, I didn't want to make it too reliant on the fact that there's a, another digital medium, uh, because if you can watch it on TV or the internet and then it's also a digital medium in which you play the game. Um, I felt like that wasn't really fair to the list. Um, so with that being said, um, Castlevania, Zen and Zard, and Duel Masters are my three um, honorable mentions, okay? Um, so my first one on the list, and I will be going in order of uh, worst to best but that's it's just my opinion it's completely subjective and again I do play quite a number of these games um, so that's gonna be the basis of my uh, of my list so I have Vanguard as the first one um, Vanguard also has a new app in which you can learn the game because I find that the learning curve for the beginning of the game is rather complicated but I will say the anime Vanguard has something that I think a lot of children's game anime miss out on um, and that's in the very beginning of the show uh, season one they have a very big focus on actually playing the game uh, super low stakes like no saving the world stuff um, I mean it eventually comes up but I like when a card game anime or can keep low stakes for as long as possible. Um, I would rather watch a show about a group of friends trying to become masters of their craft, masters of their game, rather than watching someone go, oh look, I drew this card, uh, the fate of the world is at stake. Because again, you've seen one anime like that, you've seen them all, but um, I really feel like the mechanics of the game really separate it from most of them. And like I was saying, um, 
Vanguard in particular has some very interesting mechanics where you use the field and you can move around uh, quite a bit and it matters which row you're in and there's also effects that happen uh, through the damage step and um, I do I do appreciate that quite a bit um, so Vanguard is going to be number four uh, also I guess I should say this now it is a list of four um, my first introduction to it was actually the anime um, I watched it one night and I realized this was pretty good it does follow a lot of the same tropes as uh, Yu-Gi-Oh through like monster design and character design and such um, like you have the small timid main character and the edgy good at the game rival um, but the main character ends up being a prodigy of some kind um, so those are definitely knocks air quote against it but like not really because it does like I said it does something different than most card game shows um, where they are in fact low stakes and they're mostly playing at this regular card shop even I believe one of the later se uh, seasons of Vanguard has a ca uh, the main character is the card shop owner um, and he's trying to like keep that that shop open so again I think that's really creative and that's not something we see a lot um, when it comes to card game shows it would be like having a series about Yugi's grandpa but like after he became the card shop owner Next on the list, I do have Bakugan, um, and that could be any iteration of the game. I don't play the new version. I used to play the old one, uh, like New Vestroya when that came out. Um, however, I think the concept of Bakugan is pretty um, is pretty interesting because of the fact that there are these alien beings that are trapped in the form of like a marble about yay big, and they have powers and a bunch of kids get together with these marbles that they found and they decided to create this game and then it turns out that they're still living beings um, so they have their partners and I think the concept of the game it's a th it's pretty much a bunch of three on threes where you're going to capture spaces on the board um, and the way the marble uh, the balls I shouldn't really call them marbles but the way the balls work is you roll them and then in the cards that act as the platforms there's a piece of metal and a magnet on the bottom of your Bakugan so you have to roll and get your Bakugan to open on that and if two Bakugan open on the same card then they do battle now they have uh, battle points um, in which you can and then you can boost your monsters with uh, equips and stuff like that uh, different spells for lack of a better term um, and the winner takes the card um, essentially but um, Bakugan also has a new reboot again that I haven't uh, seen uh, however I, I've heard good things and I think the rules to the game are much more clear now um, versus back when I used to play I thought the game was really good they even have a video a couple video games which do a very good job of explaining and the show itself does a pretty good job explaining how to play the game as well um, I think it's very accessible for a younger audience and it's because there's also the toy aspect for a younger audience looking for a hobby and a show that go together I feel like Bakugan is for sure a a good avenue to go um, and also every time you buy a toy you get cards and so I do think that's it's excellent from a marketing standpoint as well um, character design is pretty basic in the show um, it's the one downside I will say but it's because it's geared towards a younger audience so like anyone who uses like a pyrus monster usually wears red anyone who uses like subterra you wears like browns and neutral tones um, chaos is like white darkest is obviously black um, then you have Aquos and Ventus which are water and wind respectively so there's also elements to your monsters and you can match them up you like you can run all Pyrus all Ventus all Chaos or you could like run one of each and I think it makes for really good game building team building because even if we have the same Bakugan if it's a different color it could have different attributes and effects um, so I think that's very well handled um, and the way the game now works um, and I did have to look this up in post um, instead of having a full card that you would roll your Bakugan onto it now has these hexagon shaped uh, tiles that you can arrange in any way you want you and your opponent each arrange six and you roll 
and again like I said it's a, a series of three on threes then you have character cards for each of your Bakugan so whichever Bakugan you have has an accompanying character card that tells its attributes abilities and everything like that um, and with armed with those three you also have a 40 card deck that you draw cards from and some of the equipment and uh, spells I, I don't actually know what they're called upgrades let's call it um, power boosts stuff like that for combat purposes so that you can get the edge while battling your opponent and it's I think that's really creative because um, Yu-Gi-Oh also has a 40 card deck and they pretty much follow a similar uh, deck building scheme where you can only have three of each card um, unless otherwise stated and I think that's really cool but they also have the added benefit of the 3d because they have the uh, the ball toy or the toy rather um, as part of as an essential piece to the game so moving on we now have number two on my list and this is a game I play quite avidly um, um, but that game is Yu-Gi-Oh um, and they have tons of series spanning over the last 20 some odd years um, I think everyone remembers how iconic season one is but that doesn't really give you a good grasp of how to play the game as the show goes on it gets better and better about sticking to its own mechanics and rules um, season one however is iconic for like all of the memes like most of the memes you see from Yu-Gi-Oh come from season one you know all of this and all of the iconic things from uh, like team four star with uh, Yu-Gi-Oh the abridged series um, that's also another you guys should go to check them out um, but that's another thing um, the show is just so iconic especially for anyone who's born in like the late 90s early 2000s or like was a kid around that time um, they you have such fond memories because that game like everyone had Yu-Gi-Oh cards but I feel like not a lot of people knew how to play at the time however it is an expansive game that has rules that span from 2002 to today um, with different summoning mechanics that they introduce with each series so the basic uh, DM the first series had a big focus on just playing the game and heart of the cards you know blah 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 nonsense um, but then by season two sorry not season two the second series which is GX they have a big focus on fusion summoning um, and so there's a, a lot of characters use fusion monsters um, then you have 5D's which is infamous for being Yu-Gi-Oh on motorcycles <laughs> and that one introduced synchro monsters and different mechanics like that um, and then you have Zexel or Zeal however you feel like pronouncing it where you have characters using XC's monsters which is pretty much you take two monsters and you put them on top of each other to summon a stronger monster it's called overlaying but again the show does a really good job of explaining how the mechanics work before it gets too wrapped up in its save the world plot uh, like I was mentioning before I would personally enjoy a Yu-Gi-Oh series that was animated and stuck to a low stakes scenario where it was like someone trying to learn the game and navigate their way through um, through becoming like a regional champion or something like that like nothing where the world is going to end um, but for what it is Yu-Gi-Oh the series they tr they really do treat their audience to something that's like it's like they dabble with um, more mature tones but they don't really commit to it because again it is for children um, at the end of the day I think on the box it says like 10 plus or something like that um, but again it's it's a hobby there's over 10,000 cards you can collect um, the one thing I will say about the hobby itself is it can be rather expensive but I mean it's no different than building gunpla or anything else like that um, anyone like if anyone with a hobby knows how expensive their own hobbies are uh, now something I failed to mention about Yu-Gi-Oh a little bit earlier was the fact that the events for Yu-Gi-Oh are huge even just like you can duel online um, if you wanted to get into it uh, or try to get into it at first uh, you could play an automatic simulator which will help you just learn what your cards do and then you could play a manual simulator um, both of which give you the option to try out cards for free without investing anything into the game 
and that can be a very beneficial tool for a new player and then once you decide to get serious in the game you decide what kind of competitive level you want to be at like if you're just playing to have fun you could just buy a structure deck whatever if you just want to be casual you could you know you could spend a little bit more but get some of your favorite cards and now you have a deck if you want to be like semi competitive you'll be looking at like a higher budget and then if you want to be fully competitive you will be looking at higher numbers for what you're going to be investing in the game but for players of every skill level and every budget level you can meet at tournaments and play against like-minded people or not so like-minded people and it really gets you um, it really gives you a chance to experience every facet of the game and I just think that's a really cool thing to do especially if you have a small group of friends or even a big group of friends who all are interested in the game at like different levels um, but you just play around with your like have duels have a dueling night with your friends it's it's really a good time um, Pokemon um, now the thing with Pokemon is while it's main out like while its main medium is um, the TV show and the video games it does also have a card game which I know everyone is aware of and personally I don't know how to play the game but I do have a small collection of Pokemon cards uh, that I have because of the fact that I like their artwork um, and I do play the games avidly I've played every single one um, even the spin-off games the the thing I will say about Pokemon is with it's best with a friend group that also enjoys playing uh, because sometimes you know you, it, you could get tedious making a team um, and from what I understand the Pokemon card game is also fantastic um, I've never played Again, I've only ever collected the cards because I think the artwork is neat. <laughs> um, but the anime is also fantastic. I think that uh, the original Pokemon theme song is like a staple in every millennial's head. Because like, who doesn't want to be the very best like no one ever was, you know? Um, that being said, it has, it has more episodes than One Piece. Um, it's it's one of the longest running anime series and you you span every generation so I feel like every Pokemon that's ever existed has had at least a small chance to shine in the anime and uh, I really do appreciate that much because there is something there for everyone because they have characters who like to battle you know the main character his whole goal is to become a Pokemon master where he becomes the best at battling uh, the Alola series which was also that people really like to rag on that art style however I do think it gave us some of the most dynamic battle scenes so that being said I will say Pokemon the anime has something for everyone and the games really do offer a huge sense of community because there's people from all walks of life who play the game so I feel like there really is something there for everyone like if you don't want to be the best at battling you can go and collect you can complete a pokedex you can do the side missions uh, things like that um, the one issue I have with Pokemon is the most recent game doesn't have them all and from a game whose slogan line is gotta catch them all I think that's a little janky but overall it's a good game I love it um, I have over 500 hours in the game so I guess that goes to tell you that I wasn't really bothered too much by that um, and again all of these games that I've mentioned do have their trade-offs like Vanguard for example has a steep learning curve to the basic mechanics of the game uh, Bakugan is a little hard to get into because it is geared more towards like more than the other ones more towards children uh, Yu-Gi-Oh can be a rather expensive um, hobby and Pokemon itself you have certain issues with the game mechanics that not everyone loves but again throughout throughout the years there is I've come to find that there's no such thing as a perfect fan base there's no such thing as a perfect hobby there's no such thing as a perfect company and the only thing that you can do when you like something is uh, support it criticize it and hope it gets better you know um, and that's something I feel about all everything on this list they are all still improving and they all have very unique mechanics uh, for everyone who who's willing to try and enjoy it um, so and with that 
I hope you've all enjoyed the video. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode of Breakfast Burrito and tune in this Friday for the next episode of Burrito Banter. I've been Devin. I hope you all enjoy and don't forget to like and subscribe down below uh, and leave a message down below on what kind of topics you'd like to see on Breakfast Burrito coming up. Alright, have a good one.